In this section, we want to look at using both properties to solve these equations. Now, here's the way that we really should be doing this. The first step is to use, use the addition property to, to collect variable terms on one side. You want to collect variable terms on one side of the equation. And you also want to get your constants on the other side. So we use the addition property to get variable terms on one side of the equation and constants on the other side. Remember that old offspring song, you got to keep them separated? That's what you're doing here. Put your variable terms on one side, your constants on the other side. Now it doesn't really matter what side you pick, but a lot of us are kind of OCD and we feel that the variable can only be on what side? The left side. Right? <laughs> You know this, well, that's what you were telling me earlier. And then the second step, I didn't even realize it's the last step, is that we use, <coughs> use the multiplication property to completely isolate the variable. Use the multiplication property to completely isolate the variable. Remember, we don't solve for 2x. We don't solve for negative x. We solve for a plain positive 1, x, or y, or whatever the variable happens to be. Now, I don't want you to freak out. We go through this a piece at a time. And this is the way mathematics works, is that if you see something that's different from what we've seen before, If we see something that's a little bit different from what we've seen before, it usually only takes one step to get it back to something that we're more comfortable seeing. Okay? Once we can get it back to something that we've seen before, then we know what to do. And that's how mathematics always works. We keep adding different layers to it. And you just have to kind of unwrap those layers to get back to the core of the problem. So here, this guy looks kind of confusing because you know, I can't get x by itself in just a single step. But the first step here says to use the addition property to separate your variables from your constants. So how can I do that? I need to move the 21 over. If you look at this, and if you label these, this is a variable term, this is a constant, and that's a constant. So the easiest and quickest way for me to separate variables from constants is to move this guy to the other side. Do you all agree? So I'll do that by subtracting 21 on both sides. Will that cancel out the positive 21 that I have here? Right. So combine this, and then you have 2x equals how much? 32. Do you all agree with that? Now look at this equation. This is not anything that's new to us. This is an example very much like what we saw for the multiplication property, right? If I've got 2x equals 32, and think about what this says. Make the connection with the real world. The real world will say it's 2 for 32. 2 somethings for $32, right? I don't want two of them. I just want one. So how much is just one? How do I figure that out? What's the consumer math that I do? The consumer math is to do the division by 2, right? Isn't that what you do? So then x equals what? 32 divided by 2 is 16. How do I know if x equals 16 is correct? I can check my work, right? So if I'm going to check my work, which you should always do, you're going to replace the x with 16. And then you want to see if I multiply it times 2 and add 21, does that equal 53? 
So I'm putting in 16, which I'm saying is my solution. I'm saying that is the replacement for my variable that gives me a true statement. Doing the order of operations, I get 32 plus 21 on the left side, and that equals 53. So you see that it does check out. I do get the same thing on both sides, so I know that this answer right here, x equals 16, has to be true. Questions about that? Yes. 